students welcome to edwit in the last few sessions we have discussed about various attempts at the classification of elements these attempts were done by different scientists like doberaner newlands mendeleev and you can think of those attempts as individual mining attempts in search of something precious and now we are at the end of this mining process and the final precious thing that we got is modern periodic table this is the final thing that we got after such a long mining process and in this session we are going to talk about this modern periodic table in the last session we have talked about the achievements and the limitations of mendeleev's periodic table so this is mendeleev's periodic table and this whole periodic table is based on a law that law is periodic law this periodic law is states that the properties of an element is a periodic function of their atomic mass that means with the change of the atomic mass the properties changes and based on this whole mendel's periodic table is made and we also know that there are certain limitations associated with this mendel's periodic table and we have discussed those limitations also in the last session and to tackle this limitation a scientist named as henry mosley he in 1913 he said that there is another property this property is atomic number atomic number is more fundamental property of an element than the atomic mass so based on this statement and his proof the whole periodic law that was given by mendeleev was changed to a newer form this newer form is called as modern periodic law this modern periodic law it states that the properties of an element is the periodic function of the atomic number so in this two laws the only thing that is different is the atomic mass is changed to atomic number since the law that is governing this whole periodic table that is mendel's periodic table is changed to a newer form there should be something change there should be some change in the periodic table also and based on this newer periodic law the table that was produced is called as modern periodic table so this is modern periodic table in this periodic table elements all the elements are arranged with increasing atomic number not atomic mass this is atomic number based on this the whole periodic table was made so now we should know what is atomic number so atomic number it means there is something associated with the atom so atomic number is associated with the structure of the atom we should know the structure of the atom so in the structure of the atom electrons electrons are revolving around the nucleus so this is the nucleus the central part is called as nucleus and electrons are revolving around fixed shells so these are the fixed shells in which electrons are revolving around this nucleus and if you have a closer look of this nucleus so this is the nucleus in nucleus there are two kinds of particles there are two kinds of particles and the name of those particles is protons and neutrons so this is the basis of nucleus all the nucleons are nucleus are is made of these protons and neutrons and this number of protons and neutrons changes with different elements we have different names like hydrogen helium beryllium boron so these names are given just because they have different numbers of protons and neutrons that means they have different kinds of nucleus okay and the number of neutrons is different and the number of proton is different and the number of proton is termed as atomic number not neutron don't get confused with neutron it is the number of proton number of proton is atomic number and there is a standard way to represent atomic number so the letter z this letter is used to represent atomic number atomic number that means this much number of proton is present in the nucleus and we should also know that the charge of a proton is positive okay the nu so that means the nucleus have a positive charge because neutrons have no charge they are neutral and in a neutral atom there is no charge overall there is no charge but the nucleus has positive charge so to neutralize the positive charge there should be equal negative charge also and that negative charge is provided by the electrons and the atomic number is the number of protons so there should be equal number of electrons also present in a neutral atom so atomic number indirectly represents the number of electrons also in case of neutral atoms because if the atom is not neutral the number of electron may vary it may change it it may it may not be be equal to the number of protons okay this is the 
atomic number. So along with this, we should also know what is the standard way to denote number of neutrons. So n is used. n is used to represent number of neutrons. So these neutrons are also present in the nucleus along with the protons. There is another term that is a. It is equal to z plus n. So this a is the total number of protons and neutrons and it has a name and that name is mass number. Mass number means it is the total number of protons and the neutrons in the nucleus. So it means it is mass number. So these are the standard notation and there is a standard way to represent an atom. So in the atom there are different number of protons, different number of electrons and there is a standard way to denote all this. So this is the standard way, X, X is the symbol of the atom, Z is the atomic number and A. So Z is written in this side always and A is written in the upper, upper side of this Z. So this is the number of mass number, this is mass number that means A is the total number of proton neutron and Z is the atomic number and this is the way that in which the, all the atoms are denoted. Okay. And so now we know what is atomic number. An atomic number changes by one unit when we move from one element to the next element. That means there is an addition of one proton when we move from one element to the next element. That is why this atomic number is always one, two, three. It cannot be zero and it cannot be decimals also. If it is decimal, that means there is an addition of half or a fraction of a proton in the next element. But there cannot be any addition of half or fraction of protons. There should be always addition of one proton when we move to the next element. That is why the atomic number is always 1, 2, 3. It can be any natural number. Okay. It can be any natural number which is this but it cannot be zero or any decimals. So this is the way to represent atomic number or to represent a whole atom. When all the elements are arranged with increasing atomic number, then we got the modern periodic table and this modern periodic table is based on atomic number so the change from atomic mass to atomic number makes a huge impact and there is a certain advantage of choosing atomic number now we'll discuss those advantage of choosing atomic number in the last session we have discussed about the limitation and one of the limitation of Mendeley's periodic table was that isotopes could not be included in Mendeley's periodic table because isotopes have different atomic mass, same atomic number and they have same properties also. Since the Mendeley's period table was based on atomic mass and all the isotopes have different atomic mass, so they all the isotopes should be given different position in the Mendeley's period table. But they all have the same properties also. So that is why it is difficult to place the isotopes in the Mendeley's period table. But now since the classification is based on atomic number and all the isotopes of same element has same atomic number. So they could be given the same position in the modern periodic table. For example, hydrogen has three isotopes, hydrogen, deuterium and tritium. All of them have different atomic mass, but they have same atomic number, which is one. So the position one could be given to all these isotopes. So in the modern periodic table, the position one is written as hydrogen. So the other isotopes are non, not written. That doesn't mean that isotopes are not there. If the, all the isotopes are written for each of the elements, then the whole periodic table will be more complex. So to make the process simple, to look it, to make it simple, the only one of the symbol of the atom is written. So one symbol of the atom is written, which includes the other isotopes also. So this is the one of the advantage of choosing atomic number instead of atomic mass. Another limitation of Mendeley's periodic table was that the position regarding cobalt and nickel. The atomic mass of cobalt is higher than nickel. So it should be placed later on nickel. But in the Mendeley's period table, cobalt is placed before nickel. Based on their properties, Mendeley's put cobalt before nickel. And when the classification is based on atomic number, it is observed that the atomic number of cobalt is lesser than nickel. So from moving from cobalt to nickel, atomic number increases by one. So this is the increasing atomic number. So it matches with the law and it matches with the properties also. So this is the guess made by Mendeleev was correct and 
it is proven by the atomic number the third limitation was regarding the position of hydrogen since hydrogen has the same properties like alkali metals also and halogen also so they could not be given the same one position in the mendelis periodic table and this controversy still remains so till now the position of hydrogen is not fixed so in some of the periodic table hydrogen is written in at the middle top position of the periodic table in some of the periodic table it is written in the first position okay but when the properties of a group is studied then the properties start from the lithium not hydrogen so this limitation is still there but the other limitation are solved by this choosing of atomic number instead of atomic mass now let's discuss about the specification of the modern periodic table let's have the periodic table here this is modern periodic table in this table the elements are arranged in certain vertical columns and these vertical columns are known as groups and the elements are also arranged in certain horizontal rows and those horizontal rows are known as periods in the modern periodic table we can see that there are 18 different groups and seven different periods now what is the basis on which basis the elements are placed in certain groups or periods let's discuss that let's discuss about groups first so take any group let's take group 1 look at the elements that are present in the group 1 in group 1 the elements are lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium and francium so these are the elements of group 1 now let's see their electronic configuration so these are the electronic configuration of the elements from group 1 so this electronic configuration it means the pattern in which electrons are distributed in a atom so see the electronic configuration the last number written in the electronic configuration is same in all cases in all the elements the last number written is 1 so this last number it represents the number of valence electron so valence electron are the number of electrons are the electrons that are present at the outermost shell outermost shell that means the in atom electrons are revolving around the nucleus in certain definite shells and the outermost shell is also having certain electron and those number of electrons are known as valence electrons so in a group the elements are having same number of valence electron so in group 1 all the element have have one valence electron like this way if we write the electronic configuration of any group we will notice that the number of valence electron of all the elements in a group is same so if a element is having same valence electron it is placed in the same group so this number of valence electron is the basis of the groups so this is valence electron and this is groups now you might be thinking in a atom there are number of electrons present but why only the outermost electron is named as valence electron why a special name was given to the outermost electrons yes there is a reason behind this the reason is the valence electrons are the only electrons that take part in chemical reaction so when the number of valence electron is same the type of chemical reaction shown by the element is similar so in a group since all the element is having same number of valence electrons so they show similar kind of chemical reaction and this is also the reason why mendeley was successful in placing the all the elements in different proper groups because mendeley considered the molecular formula of the oxides and the hydroxides of the element so when each element is converted to its oxide form and hydroxide form he observed the molecular formula of those oxides and hydroxide as their chemical properties and this oxides and hydroxides are nothing but the result of the participation of the valence electron so when the number of valence electron is same the type of oxide and hydroxide formed by each element is same so this is the reason why mendeley was successful in placing different elements in proper groups now let's discuss about periods on which basis different elements are placed in different periods let's see the periodic table here in this periodic table see the elements from the period 2 so the elements are lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine and neon these are the elements from the period 2 now let's see their electronic configuration so these are the electronic configuration of the elements from the period 2 so in their electronic configuration we can see that only two numbers are written this two number represents the number of shells 
So for all the elements in the period 2, the number of shell is 2, in which all their electrons are distributed. So throughout the period 2, the number of shell is fixed. And this number of shell is the basis of the periods. In any period, the number of shell is fixed for all the elements of that period. Again, when we move from one period to the next period, the number of shell increases by 1. For example, now we are talking about the elements of period 2. So here we know that the number of shell is 2. If we consider the elements from the period 3, in that case, the number of shell will increase by 1. That means the number of shell will become 3. So for all the elements that are present in the period 3, the number of shell is 3, in which all their electrons are distributed. Likewise, for the fourth period, the number of shell is 4. In this way, on moving from one period to the next period, the number of shell increases by 1. Again, in their electronic configuration, we can see that the number of valence electron is increasing by 1 when we are moving from one element to the next element. What is the reason? In the modern periodic table, all the elements are arranged with increasing atomic number. So, when we move from in a period from one element to the next element, from left hand side direction to the right hand side direction, the atomic number increases by one unit. This atomic number represents the number of protons and it also represents the number of electrons indirectly. So, on moving from one element to the next element, the number of electrons also increases by one unit and that extra electron will be added to the same valence shell that was present for the earlier element also. Because in a period, the number of shell is fixed for all the elements. And that is why in a period when we move from left hand side direction to the right hand side direction, when we move from one element to the next element, the number of valence shell or valence electron also increases by one. Again, in the periodic table, we can see that there are different periods are present and in each period, the number of element is also different. For example, in period 1, the number of elements are 2, which are hydrogen and helium. In the next period, the number of elements are 8. In the third period, the number of elements is again 8. So on which basis this number is determined? This number can be determined from the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated to different shells. We know that in an atom, electrons revolve around the nucleus in certain definite shells. And those shells have a maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated to them. And that maximum number of electrons can be determined by using one formula. And that formula is this 2 and square. Using this formula, we can determine the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated to different shell. Here, n is a number given to different shell. So we have different names for the shell also. For example, the shell which is closer to the nucleus is known as K shell. The next shell is known as L shell. The next shell is known as M shell. So for N value have different of different shell also. For example, in K shell, the N value is 1. For L shell, the N value is 2. For M shell, the N value is 3. Let's see what is the number of electron that can be accommodated in K shell. In K shell, the N value is 1. So let's replace this 1n by 1. It will become 2. So in K shell, maximum 2 electrons can be accommodated. That is why in period 1, there are only 2 elements present. In the L shell, n value is 2. So it will become 2 square min 4, that means it will become 8. Okay. So in L shell, maximum 8 electrons can be accommodated. So that is why in the period 2, there are only 8 elements. In M shell, N value is 3. So it will become 18. So there are maximum 18 electrons that can be accommodated to M shell. But in the third period, see the number of elements present is 8. It is not 18. What is the reason? The reason is that there are there is another law which according to that law maximum number of electrons that can be present in the outermost shell is 8 okay so in case of l shell and k shell the maximum number of electrons that are that can be present is 8 and 2 which is equal to 8 or lesser than 8 so that law is applicable here but in case of m shell the maximum number is 18 which is greater than 8 so we cannot have maximum 18 electrons in the outermost shell because we can have only 8 electrons. That is why in the third period, 
we can have only 8 elements, not 18 elements. In the 4th, 5th and 6th period, we can have different number also and there are different reasons for those numbers also. And you will find those reasons in the higher classes. So that's all in this session. In this session, we have discussed about groups and periods. In the next session, we'll discuss about various properties. One of the properties is valency and how this property changes throughout the modern periodic table that we'll discuss in the next session.